So is AMD's FSR actually gonna be a massive disappointment? I've been seeing a lot of articles and videos claiming that it is based on analyzing the images that we saw in the launch event, as well as criticizing some aspects of the launch event and its claims about NVIDIA GPUs. So I've selected one article here that's kind of representative of some of those issues that I'm gonna read through some of their main points and respond to them and give my thoughts because, well, I do agree that there's some valid points, uh, reasons to be concerned about FSR. I also think there's a lot of reasons to be very positive and hopeful about it. And I think some of the negative articles aren't giving enough balance on that. So let's dive right in. First of all, I wanna mention that, yeah, there's a, a thing I am a little bit upset about because it actually led to headlines, including like the thumbnail of my video about the FSR event, which is, okay. The NVIDIA support might have been a bit overblown. Yeah, and if you're watching this video and you've seen all the headlines about FSR is gonna support a bunch of NVIDIA GPUs, AMD walked that back a little bit in some tweets. Let's actually take a look here. This article links to it here, I think down at the bottom. Let me open up the tweet here. But I think that the tweet is basically from not an Apple fan saying, great job on FSR, can't wait to really see it. And then we get a reply from Scott Herkelman at AMD saying, thanks, we are very excited to have you all try it out. Just to be clear though, we aren't optimizing it for GeForce. That will be up to them to do the work on behalf of their gaming community. We just proved that it works. Okay, okay. So at first now you might be having your heart sink if you're like on a GTX 1050, 1060, and you're like, I was counting on FSR. Ah. Um, okay, so this doesn't say it's not gonna run on GeForce cards. It says it does work on GeForce cards. It just needs optimization and AMD is not going to do that job, whether that's like a driver side thing, maybe the drivers need updates, whatever. AMD is not going to do the job for Nvidia. And I think that's perfectly fair. Although I do want to say, I think that this, <sighs> it's unfortunate the way it was marketed in their launch event, because like I probably wouldn't have led with that thumbnail, even though it helped my click through rate quite, quite a bit on that video uh, of like, you know, runs on Nvidia GPUs. If I had known that they were gonna qualify it a bit here, but let's think about some different ways that this could play out. First of all, there's the most negative option, uh, which would be that Nvidia could just pretty much ignore that this technology is developed and do nothing to optimize it, just keep on doing what they're doing, and then it really doesn't actually run on Nvidia cards. Well, that would suck, okay? <laughs> but while that certainly could be what happens, let's talk about a few other scenarios and reasons why that might not be what happens. Well, for one thing, Nvidia could view this as a platform agnostic a uh, graphic setting that's gonna be available in a lot of games. Because for one thing, I think it's, it's reasonable to expect that FSR is going to get very broad support. For one thing, AMD's claim that it's very easy to implement. And for another thing, consoles are running AMD GPUs. And AMD GPUs don't run DLSS, but they could run FSR. So it would make sense since game development is still largely focused around consoles as they're you know, main focus, whereas PC gaming, well, growing is not necessarily the, the main selling point developers are focused on, right? So it would make sense for them if FSR is a good technology to implement it. Okay, and then if a bunch of games have it available, it could just be a common graphic setting that Nvidia just chooses to support as like a pl just, yeah, platform agnostic graphic setting that we're gonna just make sure works on our cards. Cool, that, that's a very realistic possibility. It would also, I think, actually help NVIDIA's marketing department rather than AMD's if NVIDIA chooses to actually support it. And that being uh, taking away something that AMD could claim to have unique support for. So AMD will have a marketing win if they're like, we have FSR and it runs on all of our cards. NVIDIA doesn't have it. It doesn't run on, uh, on their older cards, um, you know, NVIDIA is being mean, they're choosing not to support this. AMD can claim all of that stuff if NVIDIA doesn't optimize for it. If they choose to, I think it takes some wind out of those um, AMD 
uh, marketing sales. So there's some very realistic uh, grounded reasons why NVIDIA might choose to support this. Now, I don't know if it'll be supported well at launch. Now on June 22nd, when this stuff uh, is supposed to be available, I have an RTX card, so I would love to test this stuff out, but we'll see where the support's at, especially at launch, because that's where I'm not hopeful, is, is that um, it'll be supported well at launch on NVIDIA cards. We'll see what happens. Sorry if this was disappointing news for you guys. It is what it is. Okay, now, popping back to some uh, this article, which brings up some concerns about the image quality, as well as a claim that like, you know, this particular article's title is that like, this is not even a DLSS alternative. It's just not even the same kind of thing at all. Okay, so first of all, before I dive into their claims, I think we should establish what I would consider the, um, the bar for FSR's launch to be considered a success. Because if you set the bar at it needs to be as good as DLSS 2.0, then there is absolutely not a chance that FSR is going to live up to that bar. It's just not gonna happen. DLSS has a huge head start. NVIDIA is very strong in the AI and machine learning department. They have the tensor cores to run that algorithm. FSR just isn't going to compete with DLSS 2.0 image quality at launch. I mean, if I end up being wrong about that, then I'll be happy about being wrong about that. But I, I, I don't think I'm wrong about that, okay? And, and that's just realistic. But again, I don't think it needs to compete with, that, with DLSS 2.0 to be a win. And here's what I mean. I think that for FSR to be considered a win, not a win versus DLSS 2.0, but just a win in this is a good technology that I'm glad AMD is bringing to the table, is it needs to be better than what's currently available, especially on AMD GPUs. So AMD already has the ability to run something at a lower resolution scale and then use, I think they call it what, CAS, contrast adaptive uh, sharpening or something like that, to um, try to sharpen the image and make it look closer to native res. Given that they already have that technology, FSR needs to be better than that. And the fact that they're having a big launch event and they are making this new tech tells me that they're probably confident that this is better than that. Right? So I think for this to be a win, it just needs to be better what they, than what they currently have. And they need to not abandon it and they need to continue to improve it. That's what it takes for this to be a win. In other words, uh, it needs to be a lot better than just like, okay, let's say I'm playing on a 1080p monitor on an older GPU. I need to run the game at 720p to get it to run. Now it looks like a blurry mess. Well, doing the same thing, running at 720p using FSR, if that produces a significantly better image quality than just not using FSR and running at 720p, again, that, that, that's gonna be a win. I don't think it needs to compete with DLSS. So I guess this article and some people's issues are that they're saying, well, it's not really a DLSS alternative. Well, why are they claiming it's not a DLSS alternative? Okay, so I think their arg argument kind of boils down to this. It's that DLSS is an upscaling system based on deep learning inference and uses actual hardware to enable performance enhancement without any serious quality degradation Although your opinion on what serious quality degradation might, you know, that's subjective. Anyway, <laughs> FSR is just a simple spatial upscale. The two classes of upscale are not even remotely comparable and is like resizing something in Photoshop versus resizing something in Gigapixel AI and the latter has far superior results. Okay, so what the argument really here is, is that DLSS is more of a machine learning, learning algorithm that's using temporal data, and FSR isn't a machine learning algorithm, and it's just a spatial upscale with no temporal data. And I think they're actually right about that. And they're also right about the fact that it's pro probably not gonna deliver anything like DLSS 2.0 results. 
But, and I mean, then they have these image qualities, uh, image comparisons that are grabbed from the, um, the launch event demo. And yeah, you can see that uh, here's FSR on, here's FSR off, look at the leaves. This looks way more smeared and blurry. Also granted that this is blown up to like a million percent of what this image actually would have been on your screen. So again, like you can do this with DLSS as well, where the, the differences are much more apparent when you um, when you blow them up and on a still image and, and really look at them. So fair enough. But anyway, I really don't think that uh, this is being fair because DLSS started out with a lot, uh, to my understanding, without using the temporal stuff as well. And that wasn't added until 2.0. And we saw some big improvements here. So again, this is where I, I said that I think one of the win conditions here is that AMD just doesn't abandon the tech. If FSR 1.0 is at least as good as, you know, DLSS 1.0 was, or is at least better than any of their current technology, and then they don't abandon it, maybe they can add in the temporal um, data in the future with an FSR 2.0. I think it's great to see AMD getting into this space. I don't think it's fair to say it's not a DLSS competitor because it's competing in the sense that they're both uh, image upscaling technologies to try to get you a better image than when you just turn down the resolution itself, but you get that increase in performance. So they're definitely competitors. Although again, they might not be on an equal playing field, but that's to be expected. This is 1.0. All right, again, we got these image quality comparisons and yeah, you're smearing Vaseline on the screen on one side. We'll have to see what it looks like in motion. This needs independent testing and like, Again, I don't think it'll compete with DLSS 2.0. I think that was that was most of their arguments here. So yeah, to sum up their arguments, they're saying DLSS uses AI and a temporal feedback loop for nat native image quality uh, in still and motion. FSR is a simple spatial upscaler with no AI or temporal <laughs> feedback. And my daughter's here. So apparently I'm just gonna go ahead and end the video there because I guess she needs my help with something, guys. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. <laughs> I thought she was eating lunch. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I read all the comments and um, uh, subscribe if you're interested in tech stuff and all of that. Have an excellent day.